Hello friends, welcome to Nimal Bang. I'm Piyush Jain and today we are going to be uh, doing a conversation uh, with uh, a market expert, a market veteran uh, who has seen many cycles, uh, also manages funds and uh, is very well versed uh, in terms of the cyclicality of the economy. Uh, let me now welcome Mr. Chakri Lokpia, MD and CIO of TCG Asset Management. Sir, welcome uh, to the show. Hello Piyush, how are you? As always, sir, um, pleasure and uh, good to hear from you on the show. Thank you. Now, let's uh, let's start the conversation here. Firstly, uh, from the perspective of uh, how the markets look into you. I know that you watch the global markets uh, uh, very carefully, very strongly. Uh, and when I combine three factors here, number one, uh, we are into an year which is uh, just before the major election year. Uh, budgets have been announced. We basically have managed the last year uh, slightly better uh, versus the other developed markets. On the other side, we are seeing developed markets, a lot of global issues. There is a war going on. There is interest rate hikes which are happening. There is a bit of slowdown which is happening. A lot of volatility in the commodity prices. And we, when we match up the two, how is the Indian market out to look into? Uh, PhD, they are all very good questions. If you look at uh, where we are today, India economy is actually holding up pretty well, uh, given uh, it's still about six odd percent uh, despite all these challenges. Now, as we, as you correctly point out, there are two or three major factors, both global and local. From a local perspective, inflation is beginning to come down, uh, as, the, uh, as we've seen in the last two quarters. On the other hand, because of the global factors, that is the US seems to continue to raise interest rates because their inflation differential is still between the target. They are at about six, seven percent. They want to get to two percent, which is still a long way off. On the other hand, India is at about six percent. Want to get to about four percent, which is easier to achieve. Uh, but so this is the good news for India, and not so good news for the U.S. On the other hand, we have a situation where, because U.S. will continue to raise interest rates, India will be forced to follow, and therefore it could slow down the economy. Right, and from that perspective, then the next sort of uh, logical uh, question will be that um, as an investor, for our viewers, uh, for an institution like you, uh, what will be a strategy for this year? Which sectors should we really focus? Which themes uh, uh, should be an area to go for? Uh, you know, uh, again, this is going to be a very fluid year. You know, there are two or three factors. You had also mentioned uh, earlier about elections. Given that there, there are, you know, so many states, about 12, 13 states are going for election in this year, leading up to the big election in 2024, uh, you will have, I think, a big pickup in infra spending, which is also much needed. Uh, the budget itself has announced a 33% price. So that creates jobs always because construction of whether roads, bridges, dams is a very big employment generator. And so if that comes to fruition, because the ordering has not yet picked up in full steam, it probably will in the coming one or two quarters. Uh, and then I think, so that is an important sector to focus companies like LNT and some of the product companies. Then to finance them is the banking sector, which is the corporate banks. The corporate facing banks have also fallen recently. Uh, so I think that's another, another opportunity. On the other hand, because of the high interest rates, I think some of the consumer facing facing sectors, we probably need to be slightly worried. Right. And let me sort of begin the talks here on uh, the infrastructure, because we know the fourth quarter is widely expected uh, by all the infrastructure companies as a very heavy uh, order inflow quarter for them. So perhaps this quarter could be an interesting and sort of exciting quarter. Uh, so let me take your views in terms of infrastructure where right now you're really seeing value, which stocks you are liking. Because on one side, we have roads and highways, bridges. Other side, we have a lot of, lot of things going around in terms of pipelines, government programs. Then there are waste treatments. So where you're really focusing uh, in terms of action, uh, diversified, bigger or mid-cap players. So all questions in one. Oh, indeed. Uh, you know, in terms of, yes, you're very right, the coming the next two, three months is going to set the trend for the infrastructure sector for both uh, you know, the election reasons. Uh, given that, both the state as well as central election uh, 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 that we're going to see. 
So against this backdrop, you know, NHA ordering has not yet picked up with their impact slightly below their targets. So that as a sector which we should see a pickup. It will see employment creation along various states where they want to develop uh, the national highways. That is one second is uh, again, water resource management. Water resource management are long dated contracts, but short term again, they create the both CapEx ordering as well as uh, job creation, which is again a good thing. And third is, is some form of reform uh, in the electricity sector is not really feasible at this point in time, but uh, we've seen that advanced ordering of uh, so coal so that there's no shortage of power going into the election year, which means the government is preparing itself that you know to fund all this uh, infra push, there needs to be adequate electricity supply as well. So I think these are the focus areas that one needs to look at. What do you like in it? This talk uh, perhaps or this talks perhaps uh, would be sort of fulfilling your criteria? You know, from the government perspective, I think NTPC is doing uh, very good things, innovative things. One, they will benefit from the pickup and uh, order, uh, pickup and electricity demand A and B. They are doing very interesting things in the green energy space. I think that's a space to watch out for the future. And so you will see some amount of optional valuation that will be given to NTPC and its core business is trading at well around close to its book value, so it is an undervalued company. Then on the private side, you have LNG, Larson Tubro. It has now evolved, not just in terms of being a CapEx as a infra company, but also a good 30-40% of its valuation comes from information technology. It's the companies that it holds. Uh, so therefore, LNG is also looks good. And the product companies, you know, whether it's Bharat Electronics or Hindustan Aeronautics, because defense spending is again an important thing. I've noticed, I've noticed actually what you've been saying on the defense. Uh, I'm very sure you're bullish on defense. So let me touch upon on the defense. Uh, uh, orders have really increased over the last many, many quarters. Uh, it has been some good times for these companies. Um, how are you looking at uh, these defense companies? Uh, now, there are two aspects which I want to know. Uh, one, we always talk about the execution pace. Can the government companies really sort of uh, increase their execution pace because Revenue growth is also proportional to execution pace also. And secondly, uh, how are you looking at the earnings growth trajectory for these two stocks? Yeah, indeed, you know, very good questions. One is, of course, Larson Tubro also benefits from defense. And in addition to that, Bharat Electronics, other than the routine defense electronics that it makes, is now branching into trying to incorporate some form of AI as well as machine learning into some of its product space. So these products are typically higher margin products. And therefore, while it's a, a, a company where the pricing is usually dictated by uh, the government contracts, in this case, they will have some leeway as far as the AI and related products. Are. On the other hand, Hindustan Aeronautics, huge order book. You know, the order book, like you rightly mentioned, uh, in terms of the conversion, the order book itself is probably about three, four years of orders that they have. But the conversion pace, I think, will see a pickup thanks to the uh, aero show that we had recently in Bangalore and uh, for some of the aircraft fighters as well as other products. Uh, and valuations are always been on their side, whether it's Bharat Electronics or Hindustan Aeronautics. And I think so, these are some of the companies that, to look at. Okay, so a couple of defense companies. We also had an infrastructure company pick up uh, there. Uh, uh, before I move to the banking, I just wanted to ask you one question. Uh, just trying to understand whether it's about stability or also sometimes value picking. So, for example, in infrastructure, there are a couple of companies who are trading at lower valuations. Uh, they could be likes so of uh, a bit of IRB, a bit of Dilip-Bilcon, and then there is a LNT, very stable, diversified, trading at sort of uh, valuations which the market likes. Uh, is LNT something which you prefer primarily because of safety, because of infrastructure? One is safety, as you rightly pointed out, and the second important factor is you know one in probably five orders, infra orders in the country uh, that are ordered out goes to LNT. So you know if we believe that ordering is infra ordering is going to pick up, uh, then LNT will be there in one of those five contracts for every five contracts. So that is one second, as you rightly pointed out, valuation is clearly on its side. Three, uh, yeah, you know the. 
their IT bit of the business, uh, get some kind of comfort, though it's not related to infra, of course, but because the IT services space is still very strong uh, from an export perspective, despite global weakness. So I think that again has underperformed for the last three years, the IT sector, the last two years. So that provides comfort from a non infra space to LNT as an infra company. Let's catch up on the, the IT sector. Now, there, I would say the street is divided in, in this sector for now because some people are saying that, okay, after June in the second half, the Fed might have to cut the interest rates. They're doing the increasing right now. They might have to cut in the, the sort of second half. At that time, the dollar index might cool off. And then actually the question becomes is whether actually the IT sector will continue the earnings growth or that, that would be some sort of dollar thing to the hedge it. And the second story, the second part of the street is where they're saying that whatever is happening in the West is always going to create more opportunities for the IT sector. So help us understand from the perspective of what you like in IT sector, both on the service and the product side, with stocks. And uh, what's your sort of overall uh, take on this uh, currency scenario? Yeah, you know, they're all very important points. If you look at uh, information technology and you look at the broader technology space, companies like Facebook, uh, uh, Amazon, etc. These are all consumer-facing technology companies whose growth, uh, in a good perspective, in a good sense, has actually come from the new products that they are creating, which will add to future earnings. Now, as the slowdown began, so the terminal value of the cost increase as interest rates increased, and you saw the valuations coming off a good 60, 70 percent for market leaders as big as Facebook. On the other hand, uh, so which, uh, on back of that, the collateral damage, those stocks connected, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, Amazon, et cetera, they connected anywhere between 50-70%. Uh, in collateral damage, Indian IT services companies also fell down about 30-40% now over the last one and a half years. But the big difference is Indian IT are services companies, they're not IT product companies. And so their growth is dependent on execution of projects to improve productivity and not necessarily consumer facing, which creates new revenue streams. So their growth is not as much dependent upon what rate you discount uh, as the interest rate, the, the underlying cost of capital, because you know these guys are largely the only thing that they spend on is employee costs. Their R&D spend is not as much as what an Amazon spends. So long story short, I think IT therefore has connected. In case there is a US slowdown, recession, companies look to increase productivity by doing more using more of IT services, which will benefit the Infosys, the HCL technologies, TCS, all the frontline names. Right, and amongst the three names you have taken, which one you are overweight on? Infi or SCL or TCS? See, if we look at uh, these companies, TCS is, uh, you know, all of them are growing between 13 to 15% revenue. And mind you, when a company is growing at 13, 15%, which means if it can maintain that pace high for the next two, three years, which looks very likely, the sheer company's revenue base will double over the next three, four years. The earnings growth, on the other hand, is again also growing at about the same pace, 13 to 15%. Against this backdrop, TCS has the highest ROE, therefore has the highest PE at about 26 times. HCL Technologies, lowest ROE, low, lowest PE at about 14 times. But the underlying growth of all of them is strong, and so is the mid cap. So I think, you know, whether it's an Infosys or an HCL tech, Technology or a TCS, they're all looking good, and they will deliver 20% returns year on year going forward. Okay, and on the product companies, uh, that's an area which is a very specialized area. So what you'll be liking in the product IT companies? See, the product IT companies clearly uh, are largely consumer-facing com companies, whether it is Zomato uh, or Paytm. They're all consumer-facing companies. So their innovation has largely been in only scalability in acquiring new customer bases rather than creating a brand new technology innovation, which brings down the cost for the overall ecosystem, which is what some of the Amazons are, are trying to do. So whereas they were given those kind of valuations, the Indian 
consumer centric companies um, it companies consumer centric it companies and therefore their valuations so in a period where overall economic growth is slowing down consumer will spend less and therefore you can't give the same valuations you gave these pro it product companies a year ago or two years ago so the answer will be that right now you're not liking the product it companies i think even after the uh, 40 50 percent fall i think i'll still stay away because now they will have to spend less on expansion which translates into lower revenue growth potential so therefore lower valuation so i'd still stay away and be on the side okay so the choice is very clearly large cap it service companies uh, so from it we talked about infrastructure defense it now we go to consumer franchises um, on one side we have the financial consumer franchises like i call them the banking as a financial consumer franchises and the second actually we have the edible uh, franchises which are like the likes of uh, d mart hul america and all that so let's first talk about the financial world here um, to fuel uh, the sort of infrastructure or the larger indian population uh, banking perhaps is one sector where all institutions they really think that this is the way actually they can play upon the entire consumption so do you like anything in the banking uh, you you absolutely right in your observation in an economy which is large even though it is slowing but still overall the trend is uh, up because it's still the fastest growing economy in the world india is growing at for, for the next year or two uh, against this backdrop from if you look at from pandemic times to now credit growth rate has picked up it now stands at about 16 odd percent for the overall system deposit growth rate which was higher during the pandemic time some amount of spending pickup has happened so deposits also are growing slightly slower probably than in time meanwhile because you know the overall business was in a lull banks have cleaned up all their bank to bad loans their balance sheets are far stronger they have adequately capitalized themselves their tier one ratios are stronger including nbfcs npas are under control provisions are gone so which means banks are today healthy enough to lend as and when the demand comes they are in a position to do so which let's say they were not in in uh, five years ago so that is the good news and meanwhile the banks whether it's private or uh, public they have largely remained uh, range bound in terms of the valuations psu banks on one hand whether it's sbi which is trading only at about point in nine times book or the smaller banks bank of india canada bank half a time book on the other hand the icici access of the bank trading at two times one and a half times book so the valuations are pretty much on their side so i think with a backdrop of a healthier bank balance sheet overall economy mending itself despite the slowdown banks are clearly the place to to buy into in the overall space and in that case where actually you will buy uh, private banks or uh, the psu banks i think it will be a combination of both uh, uh, both private and because if you and psu simply because if you have psu banks which will actually benefit from the infra spend whenever the government spends on road bridges they'll borrow from the psu banks first so which means the bank of india canara bank the mid cap one or state bank of india the largest bank then on the other hand the the, the so th that is one which clearly looks good second the icici bank and the axis bank have a healthy mixture of both corporate as well as retail facing and their valuations are on, on their side the bank and balance sheet also looking good So they also offer very good upside to the current market. Right, and not HDFC Bank. HDFC Bank, I think you know, uh, with uh, the the merger pending with HDFC, I think because of the technical factors, uh, it'll hold back its valuation a little bit. But once that is out of the way, clearly very strong franchises both HDFC and HDFC Bank and continue to be market leader. but it's important to note that the roe of an hdfc bank today is very similar to an roe of a state bank of india so the, it, then why would you give a far higher multiple to an hdfc bank okay, but of course you'll give it for the franchise so i think those are factors which you have to think about very valid point and that actually only tells uh, that the conversion is coming back to the psu banks and i am tempted to ask you while state bank of india 
from the larger perspective is very clearly a uh, sort of preference here in the mid cap psu banks because a lot of many times viewers investors they really actually start struggling in the mid cap psu bank segment which is actually a really safer and a good sort of pick here so is there any psu bank in the mid cap basket which you like uh, you no know, clearly you know uh, bank of india canara bank union bank they all at uh, even punjab national bank for that matter in that order they all are trading at about have 0.5 0.6 times adjusted book value which is you know they all trade usually at 0.8 0.9 times so it means just the sheer upside as they grow into the valuation multiple is a good 60 70% but b they have held back because of you know recent uh, negative news on big uh, on the adani has pulled down some of the banking sector valuations on now in an election year there is also the fear that will there be you know loan loan write offs which again holds back psu banks so i think these are some of the fears which are holding these banks uh, back all things uh, being equal i think they offer a valuation comfort where uh, and therefore something worth looking at. okay and uh, so psu banks are actually one segment we have already talked about the mid cap in the last year psu banks uh, last year private banks axis bank and icic bank are actually holding out the preference here uh, want to ask you one question on indusind bank uh, a bank which has seen its own share of troubles uh, the pi basically has saw d rating uh, in your view is, is are we still have are we still having some time uh before actually we can call out that the worst is over or you think uh, now the grinding period uh is already over and uh, perhaps some improvement is going to come indusind bank you know as you rightly uh, pointed out it's had its share fair share of uh, issues it's fixed it's uh, largely fixing its npa problems increasing its provisions but these npas uh, are still higher provisions are still lower versus some of the competitor banks and and therefore their return ratios are still lower and on the other hand the, the and that is the concern on the other hand the management has shown uh, its uh, ability as well as commitment to provide capital as well as increase uh, capitalization of its tier 1 ratios tier 1 and tier 2 ratios in addition to that it also benefits from an emerging uh, commercial vehicles because that has been its traditional strength and if an infra has to pick up then along with that demand for commercial vehicles commercial loan financing also picks up which in the sense is a beneficial so i think it's a bank where i think i would not go all in but start incrementally adding positions into the bank because it still has some issues to iron out in terms of bringing down the very important point so we got all the clarity on the picks uh, on the financial sector let's talk about another sector uh, which is uh, the consumer sector uh, what's your uh, sort of uh, view here we started the conversation when you were saying that the indian consumption is slowing down uh, so there is an evidence there and uh, when we look at the consumption sector and i'm trying to uh, slice the consumption uh, consumption sector like this whether it's the telecom consumption or we're talking about a rural consumption urban consumption discretionary consumption where you are finding right now value and uh, comfort uh, you know yes that's a very fine distinction of the various sub sectors uh, in so far in terms of farm output support is, is supposed to be good so far uh, outlook still is looking strong so which means some of the traditional hindustan levers uh, and uh, nestles and britannia will continue to do okay uh, they is they provide a safety net on the other hand after post pandemic uh, uh, two wheelers as a segment has really picked up because people want their own personal mobility and uh, also which means a tvs motors uh, looks good uh, bajaj auto with also looks good because you know these are two players in addition to their regular engines they also spending a fair degree of innovation in the ev space so that had some valuation comfort on that then on the other hand in the case of um, retail if you take companies like uh, abfrl you know they are more probably uh, have a greater exposure to the lower end of the consumption of the pantaloons of the world where the lower end of the consumer is still penny pinching and therefore 
will be impacted, will spend lesser. On the other hand, the high end consumer, uh, companies like Arvind, you know, the higher price point products, uh, those are probably better protected because their the spending power is still in. Right. And what about the diversified companies? Uh, whether it's uh, the DMART, the Reliance Industries, or the other holding companies, any sort of value you're seeing there? You know, clearly Reliance Industries will uh, benefit from various aspects of the consumer. And, you know, it's no longer, as you, as you know, just an oil and gas company, but it all, it's telecom is actually a consumer exposure and therefore it will help. And it, has, it is also the, one of the largest Reliance retail is one of the, la is the largest retail chain in the country. And, and the consumption has been weak for general economic factors, but again, the excellence in execution will help them improve margins. And the valuation is still on your side if you look at the sum of the parts of Reliance, of which consumer plus telecom is a good more than 50% of the overall valuation. Right. And when, when, right now, are you buying into consumption? Like, that should be uh, my question to you. I, I think, no, we are not buying into consumption yet, uh, mass consumption. We look very severe. Uh, for instance, we're looking at TVS motors because of the EV component is doing well in TV, EVs as a new space, as well as his ex existing ICE business is doing fine. Um, on the other hand, you have a company like Voltis, which has corrected significantly for all its problems of losing market share, it's trying to address it, and then therefore valuation is on its side. So I think that's the approach, but not really overweight consumer. Okay, now let's move away from the sort of all the headline sectors we have discussed. Uh, what else do you like? Because I remember from all our conversations before, um, you you always have something uh, which is either coming from the mid-caps or something which is uh, a sort of uh, undiscovered area also. Is there anything else which you're liking right now? You know, um, I, I think still banking, mid-cap space. I think uh, if we wa watch the space for... Because you know, probably in another quarter or so, the margins will peak, they start trending down, but that's okay. That's a part of the cycle. Still valuations are aside. So the mid cap banking, I think uh, looks good. Some of the cement names like JK Cement or JK Lakshmi have also corrected fairly significantly in the overall weakness. Any infra spend, again, uh, cement is a sector which will clearly benefit. So. The, those are companies again which I will look at. Okay, so uh, those actually are the names which I will be watching out for. And uh, uh, my, my last question to you would be a sort of uh, a sum up if I uh, do the entire market, uh, whether it's uh, the Dani Saga or uh, the sort of uh, uh, the flows which we are seeing from FIs um, broadly on the market. Are you feeling that we are on a strong footing? We can see another 10 15 percent growth from here. Or uh, you see that this is going to be a flattish year. Like, uh, what's your sense on the market? I think this year is going to be a highly volatile market, but we'll probably end uh, roughly about 10, 15 percent higher than where we are today. Simply because valuations are on its side, on India side, the economy is on the mend. Uh, the consumer, though weak, is not leveraged. Corporates are strong balance sheets. Banks have strong balance sheets, so which means all of them have everything in place. Once you see the peak of interest rates, and then stabilizers start coming down, you will begin to see this upward push, and that will probably be towards the second half of this year. So I think net net that's the reason we will I think we will end up probably at 10 15 percent higher from where we are today. Well, I think I'm very sure that I think will be a good investment premise uh, for our viewers to really understand uh, how they should be planning after the investments uh, for this year. Uh, sir, uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and uh, hear uh, all your uh, uh, great uh, talks on the markets and the stocks. Thank you so much for having me. And dear viewers, uh, with that, it's a wrap on the show. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for in-depth interviews of India Inc and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates.